Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about the relationship between temperature and pressure, or Gay-Lussac's law. So, again, we're assuming in this case that we are keeping the number of particles constant. And we're keeping the volume of the container constant. So with those two in ideas in mind, if we imagine some sort of rigid container that has a number of gas molecules, and those gas molecules are flying about as normal, and we increase the temperature, again, we recall that this really means that we are increasing the speed of the gas molecules. If we increase their speed, we're going to do two things. First of all, we're going to make collisions with the side of the container. More frequent. Secondly, we're going to make the particles deliver more force. when colliding with the side of the container. So those two things will both serve, if we remember pressure, is the force per unit area. Those two things will both serve to increase the force, and, as a re and since the area is constant, because we said volume is constant, an increase in the force will lead to the pressure increasing. So when we increase temperature, we increase pressure. It is again a direct relationship, so pressure is directly proportional to temperature. Creating a ratio with this then means that P1 goes to T1 on the top and P2 goes to T2 on the bottom. Or we could also say temperature is directly proportional to pressure. The application I want to discuss with this is tires. If we imagine tires in the summer and the winter, in the summer, when, when it's hotter, the, the um, temperature then is increased. And the pressure inside the, inside the tire may be increased as well. This can lead to the tires of a car driving, you can imagine, across the, de the desert somewhere in, say, in Nevada or something. And the tires getting hotter and hotter and hotter and the pressure and pressure increasing and increasing. And this can lead to tires blowing out in extreme heat. On the other end of the spectrum, in the winter, many people frequently realize that since it's a colder temperature, the pressure in their tires decreases. Not as dramatic here, but this just means that we need to add air to our tires at the beginning of the winter. to compensate for cold weather. So that's how the changing temperature of, of tires affects the pressure within those tires. And finally, a numerical problem. I, oh, that should say A, I was going to say an aerosol, but A spray can can be pressurized at, or can pressurized at 150 kilopascals. So P1 equals 150 kilopascals is thrown into a fire. In the fire, the temperature increases from T1, which is 22 degrees Celsius, to T2, 450 degrees Celsius. It's hot fire. 
determine the pressure in the can at the new temperature. Well, before we get anywhere here, oh, we're looking for P2. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change these temperatures over to Kelvin. Because we know whenever we're dealing with our ratios, we have to use our absolute temperature scale. Now I can set up my ratio. Putting my P2 on my upper left hand side to make my equation a little easier to solve. So P2 goes to P1 and P1 goes to T1 because it's a direct relationship. So P2, I don't know, 150 kilopascals. T2 is 723 degrees in the fire. And P1 is 295 degrees Kelvin out of the fire. So 723 divided by 295. 2.45. Now multiplying that by the 150 kilopascals. You get 368 kilopascals, which is a very, very high pressure. That's as much as three atmospheres. Actually, it's more than that. So this sort of, this question sort of illustrates why it's dangerous to throw pressurized cans into the fire because the hotter temperature is going to cause the pressure inside the can to get higher and higher and higher. And at some point, this pressure is going to be big enough that it causes the can to explode. What pressure would really be required for that? I don't really know, but you see the point here. So as temperature increases, speed increases. This increases the collisions between the gas molecules in the container. It also means that they deliver more force when colliding. Both of those two things work together to increase the force delivered by the gas molecules when they collide with the side. More force means more pressure. We can see this in our tires. When they get hot, the pressure goes up. Maybe they blow out if the temperature is hot enough. If they get cold, the pressure goes down. Maybe we have to add air. And we can see numerically that an increase in pressure, say from throwing a can into a fire, could be quite dangerous, creating quite high pressures. So that is the relationship between pressure and temperature, or Gay-Lussac's law.